Bakunin, An Invention, by Horst Bienek. Book review. Right, so this one's a bit unusual. This is kind of an obscure book, so I should probably give some background here to explain this. It's, uh, right, Mikhail Bakunin was a famous anarchist, arguably the founder of anarchist political theory, depending on who you talk to. Some people say it was uh, Joseph Proudhon, uh, but most people say it was Mikhail Bakunin. Uh, he lived in the 19th century. He was most famous for, well, being the founder of modern anarchist political philosophy. And uh, also he's famous for being the rival of Karl Marx. Uh, the two of them uh, were in conflict over control of the International Working Men's Association. They, they had this ongoing rivalry between them. It's, and uh, Marx eventually ended up winning that one, and Bakunin had to, was expelled from the Working Men's International Working Men's Association. So uh, I, I've talked about all of this before, actually, in one of my previous videos, a video series on anarchism I did, which I will link in the description down below if anyone's interested in that. But uh, right for today, I'm just going to talk about this book. Anyways, uh, Bakunin. Uh, so this, this is one of my historical interests. I'm interested in the life of Bakunin and kind of 19th century radicalism in general. Uh, I also happen to be a big fan of historical fiction. Uh, I, historical, you know, I, I like history, but I'm a bit lazy. Uh, I, I don't like reading dry academic histories. I much prefer historical fiction. Now, if you're reading about like ancient Rome or something, there's loads of historical fiction. You, you know, people write novels about Roman emperors and stuff like that. Uh, if you're into the 19th century, there's not quite as much historical fiction. But uh, one day I, I got a little bit curious and I, I was searching on Amazon and searching on Google and I thought, I wonder if there's any historical fiction about Mikhail Bakunin. I, you know, just one of those random searches that you do late at night. Uh, and this probably won't surprise you. There's not much. Or, or at least I didn't find anything. If, if somebody else out there has found something or has a book to recommend, let me know. Uh, there is... The, the two things that popped up were, well, this book here, Bakunin and Invention. Uh, and also there's a trio of plays by Tom Stoppard. Uh, Tom Stoppard is, is like the famous British playwright. I think he's most famous for writing uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstein are dead. But, uh, you know, like a, one of those famous playwrights. He wrote a trio of plays about Russian radicalism, uh, in which I think Mikhail Bakunin was one of the main people in that play. I did not go with the Tom Stoppard plays, although maybe I should have. Uh, that might have been more interesting, come to think of it. But I didn't. I thought, no, that's those are plays. I'm interested in a novel. I'm, I'm going to order the novel. So I ordered it through Amazon. Uh, it's an old book. It was published in 1970. I think it was actually published in German in 1970 and then translated into English. I don't think it's still currently in print, but, you know, the beauty of Amazon is you can get all these old, out-of-print books. It's so easy in this day and age to track down obscure books. So here I am with the review. Um, right, so it turns out that this book is actually not really a historical fiction about Mikhail Bakunin. It is... It, it's, it's a bit... Interesting. It's, it's it's one of those kind of modern, postmodern books where there's like a whole bunch of stuff going on, and there's not much of a narrative structure structure going on here. But to the extent there is a narrative structure, uh, the book is a fictional story about a biographer who's writing a biography of Mikhail Bakunin. So it's it's historical fiction in that sense, or it's, it's fiction in that sense, I guess. Uh, but it's, it's not set in the 19th century. It's set in present day. Well, sorry, it's an old book. So I think it was published in 1970. So it's set, it's set in 1970, present day at the time, uh, telling the story of a biographer who's researching Mikhail Bakunin. So you, you get into the biographer's thought process. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting book. It's so full of randomness that it's a bit difficult to describe succinctly. 
Uh, the cover jacket contains a quotation reading, quote, This is not just a documentary, not research, nor is it a novel. Uh, so that's the cover jacket. Now, the author himself uh, uses a quotation to open up the, the, the whole book, which perhaps sums up the book as well as anything. Quote, The story of this book amounts to this, that the story it was to tell doesn't get told. So that, that's the quotation with which the author opens the book. Uh, yeah, so as I said, it's the story of the biographer, although there's not much of a narrative structure, there's a bunch of random stuff inserted in there, and uh, there's also some stream of consciousness type stuff where we get insight into what the, what the biographer is thinking. Bakunin's biographer is never named. Uh, he's only referred to as he throughout the book. Now, for the most part, this isn't a huge problem, but it occasionally does cause some confusion because Bakunin is often referred to as he as well. So sometimes you're not quite sure if the he that they're talking about is he the biographer or he Bakunin. I'm not quite sure if this is a translation issue because, again, this book was originally written in German. I suspect that it's supposed to be intentional because, you know, it's just that kind of book. Uh, one of these postmodern type books where the reader has to infer a lot of what's going on or use their imagination or, the, you know, the author is making the reader work to derive meaning. So Bakunin's bi bi biographer, he's writing a biography of Bakunin, but he's primarily interested in Bakunin's later years. So this fo uh, the biographer is interested in focusing on the botched revolt in Bologna in 1874 when Bakunin was 60 years old and on the, then on Bakunin's retirement from the Jura Federation and from activism the same year. Now, Bakunin's biographer, it's a little bit hard to tell what's going on with his life because the details are kept hidden, again, I suspect intentionally. But from the brief glimpses we get of him, uh, we infer that he himself is a middle-aged activist. So uh, this is presumably why he's interested in the life of revolutionaries as they get older. I mean, everybody romanticizes the young revolutionary on the barricades, but what happens to the aging revolutionary? Are they still a romantic figure or does it get a little bit pathetic at that point? Uh, quoting from the book, page 39. No, he had never intended to write a biography of B, not from the very beginning. It was solely the later B who interested him. An aging revolutionary. There is nothing more tragic and at the same time, more ridiculous. Uh, quoting from page 39 of the book. And by the way, whenever they say B, that means Bakunin. That's another thing going on in the book. Uh, and then on the following page, this picture, he said once more, just imagine it. B, the revolutionary, tormented by cardiac asthma, old, with a bad bladder, deserted by his friends, alone with passionate and still fanatic hate, which he cries out in his letters to distant friends, sorry, to a distant friend in London. Now the biographer will occasionally let his mind wander and reflect on his own life of activism and the way he feels cut off from society. He is both proud of his alienation from bourgeois society and at the same time desperate to be included. And he sometimes infers this inner, inner struggle onto his sketches of Bakunin. I'd be curious to know, the, uh, that's a biographer in the novel, the author of this book, Horst Binnick, uh, I don't know a lot about him. There, I mean, he seems to be an interesting guy from what little I do know of him. There's a Wikipedia page which gives some information. Uh, there's also a, just a little bit of information about him on the cover jacket of this book, which, yeah, said that he himself had a political history and he was about 40 at the time this book was published, uh, 1970. Uh, so, 
Yeah, the biographer, you get the impression he's about 40. So I'd be curious how much of this is bio autobiographical, like how much of this is actually Horst Binnick's thoughts himself. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not clear. So I, I guess in the absence of any anything that's clear, you, I don't know, you, you'd have to assume maybe it's fiction. Uh, the book is filled with quotations and excerpts from a number of different sources, and many of these aren't even related to Bakunin, or at least not directly. Uh, they share a common theme uh, about the revolutionary and the rebel, but they're often inserted abruptly into the book without much transition, which gives them a feel of be feeling of being random. For example, pages 17 to 19 are filled with an excerpt from Vera Figner's memoirs. Now, Vera Figner uh, was one of the people involved in the assassination of Tsar Alexander II. Uh, a couple pages later, page 21, it's filled with slogans written on the walls of the Academy of Arts in Munich on July 17, 1969. So, you know, part of the student movement there in Munich. Uh, the longest quotation in the book is a whole eight pages, and it's from the Rules for Revolutionaries. And this one is set up a little bit. It's not completely random. Um, Rules for Revolutionaries is a pamphlet that was published in the 19th century, uh, the authorship of which is a bit of a mystery. It was either written by, his, by Bakunin himself, or more likely his disciple Nietzscheev, or perhaps both of them in collaboration. Now, the, the biographer, the biographer inside this book, uh, mentions briefly the controversy around the authorship, uh, and then he quotes large sections of it, of it uh, while wondering to himself if he could ever live up to the incredibly high standards set by this revolutionary catechism. Uh, to quote from that part of the book, quote, he looked in amazement at the, sentence, at the sentences piling up before him. He would not have been capable of this asceticism and devotion. They were rules for the order of priests of the revolution. Uh, in quote, that's from page 71. Uh, now, another note, this, this book uh, came out in 1970, so it was written during kind of I mean, it came out in 1970. I assume maybe parts of it were written during the 60s, which was, of course, during the height of the, the new left in Europe. Uh, and it contains references to the student protests in Munich, Jimi Hendrix, and then political figures like Danny Cohn-Bent and Rudi Deutschke. Uh, both of these are figures from the 1960s. Uh, Danny Cohn-Bent uh, was the leader of the French student movement in 1968. He was actually German. He was a German Jew, but he was studying in France uh, during 1968. Rudi Deutschke, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, I'm probably not, was uh, the leader of the German student movement in the 1960s. So, you know, there are these brief references to characters from the 1960s, figures from the 1960s, uh, but most of them are brief, so the book isn't necessarily boxed in by that. I thought, this is a little bit of a digression, but being a bit of a film buff, as somebody who watches a lot of, lot of movies, uh, in addition to reading historical fiction, watching movies is the other lazy way I get a lot of my historical knowledge, uh, I've I always take an interest in movies based on history, and there is an interesting section in this book uh, where the biographer imagines a Hollywood movie based on the life of Bakunin. Th this may just be of interest to me because I like movies based on history, but I, I thought it was interesting. Interesting food for thought here. I'll, I'll quote from the section of the book here. Uh, I, I think this does a good job of painting the picture of the kind of movie that you could get about Bakunin. Quote, It won't be much longer until Hollywood films the life of B. What a subject. B in the salons of Berlin and at Tieck's, Wernhagen's, at Schelling's, B's hikes with Werhog and Wittling through Switzerland, 
B visits Marx and Proudhon in Paris. He participates in the February Revolution of 1848 in Paris. Goes from there to Breslau to be closer to the insurgent Poles. He is in Prague for the Pentecost Revolt. He had come as a delegate to the Congress of Slavs. Now from Clementium, he is leading the resistance to Swag sorry, Schwarzenberg's troops. In the May revolutions of 1849 in Dresden, he again mounts the barricades. He belongs with Hebner, Raquel, and Richard Wa Wagner, among the most active revolutionaries. He is arrested in Chemnitz, the Saxon and Prussian prisons, the Siberian exiles, the flight across Amar to Japan, B in Europe again, he goes to Herzen in London, his activity in the International in Zurich, Geneva, and St. Emir, the clash with Marx in the schism, B in Loins and Marcel's, B in Bologna the, for the revolt that fails before it even really begins, his flight, his resignation, his illness, his death and burn, doesn't that sound fantastic? He had shouted. He even had a title for it already. A life for the revolution. Or even better, the Satan of revolution. What a box office hit. Enough time had passed now to welcome a rebel home to the bourgeois society by means of the cinema. Yes. Yes, but they were still afraid of Deutschke. Sorry, that Deutschke, I'm... Sure, I'm pronouncing that wrong. That's Rudi Dorske, the leader of the German student movement. Uh, yeah, it does sound like there's plenty of interesting material there for a movie about Mikhail Bakunin. Uh, now, he concludes, of course, by saying, oh, they probably won't do it. But, I, I mean, I think, ironically enough, the 1970s were precisely the kind of era when this film could have gotten made, right? That's when they, they had all those independent films being made and the auteur directors. And, and there were movies made about radicals uh, like uh, John Reed's. I, I think that was during the beginning of, uh, sorry, Jack Reed. Uh, I think that was during the beginning of the 80s, but, you know, still kind of that era. I can't imagine them doing it now, here in 2019, when everything's so focused on the blockbusters. But, you know, these trends come and go, so, you know, who knows, in another 20 years, maybe these independent movies will come back into fashion. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, if they ever do put together a movie on Mikhail Bakunin, I'd certainly be interested in seeing it. A anyways, final verdict on this book. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. Would I recommend it? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 no, I'll tell you what, I didn't hate it. Uh, I'd not, I'm not sure I'd recommend anyone go through the trouble of tracking it down like I did. Uh, but if, if you do find a copy in your local library or something, it's, it's readable. It, there are some points, some points of interest in it. Uh, if you're interested in just getting information about Mikhail Bakunin, though, don't go for this book. Just, just get a traditional biography. Okay.